Yes, we're going to discuss the sources of nutrients and we're going to start with the mineral sources of nutrients which came from the weathering of the Earth's crust. So upon weathering of the Earth's crust, minerals are being released and likewise nutrients are being released and with, together with the formation of the soil. So meaning to say that during the formation of the soil, the soil is already enriched with nutrients if they are not lost during the weathering process. So soil will going to provide nutrients to the plants. So without soil, there would be no plants and without plants, there would be no food and without food, animal could not survive. Thus soil plant and is the beginning of the soil plant animal food chain. Soil is the basis of human existence and the measure of the future because human existence depends on the soil as a medium for crop production. So for nitrogen, it has no mineral source, but then it can derive from soil, uh, from the air, which is brought back to the earth upon electrical discharge in nitrate form. For phosphorus, mineral form is the apatite, then potassium, feldspar, mica, elite. For calcium, it's horn blendy, plagioclase, dolomite, and calcite. For sulfur, it's found in gypsum and mineral so, uh, metal sulfide such as pyrite and released in the soil in the form of hydrogen sulfide and sulfate. For magnesium, it occurs in hornblende, dolomite, and biotite. For micronutrients, which these are derived from various minerals and do not usually become limiting to the plants since the amounts needed are only very small amounts. For example, for iron, which is the most abundant uh, micronutrients being supplied by limonite, hematite, zeotite. And these micronutrients are at times present in excess of plant requirements that they may cause toxicity to the plants. Aside from mineral sources is we have the organic sources. These are residues of dead in dying plant materials of macro and microbiological in origin. It is a reservoir of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur in other macro and micronutrient essential for, for plant growth. And organic matter contains usually 5 to 6% nitrogen, about 1% phosphorus, and about 1% sulfur. Organic form of nutrients for nitrogen is amino acid in proteins. And these are usually today with the, uh, with the technology, these are being uh, applied to the plants directly in the form of amino acid in protein forms. For phosphorus, it is the inositol phosphate, phosphomonoester, phosphotriester. For sulfate, I for sulfur, phosphate, ester, and ethers. And this comprises 50% of the total sulfur content of the soil. Cysteine and methionine are also present in the soil. And these are the sulfur-containing amino acid. Another source of nutrients is fertilizer. These are either in organic form or inorganic form that are manufactured and could derive from atmosphere, specifically for nitrogen, minerals, and organic materials. This provide high concentration or percentage of the plant nutrients to the plants. So example of fertilizer that can provide nutrients to the plants are urea, compost, solophos, and aside from that, potassium chloride in other fertilizer that are available in the market. Another source of nutrients is the exchange site or the soil colloids. Soil colloids usually adsorb positive or negatively charged nutrients or what we 
call it as cations and anions. These are temporally stored upon ionization of the added fertilizer or other nutrients that are added in the soil. So during ionization of fertilizer, nutrients are transformed into their positive and negatively charged ion in the soil solution. So the ionic nutrients in the soil solution exchange with the ions in the soil surface. And this process is known as ion exchange. So ion exchange is uh, the process wherein the exchange site will go in to supplement the nutrients that are present in the soil solution. Because in ion exchange, this is the interchange of equivalent amount of ions from the solution with ions which are swarming in the boundary of charged surface in equilibrium. Or in other words, this is the reversible process for in cations or anions from the soil colloids are exchanged with those cations or anions from the soil solution respectively. Looking into this figure of ion exchange, soil colloids usually has negative and positive charge. So the negative charge will going to attract positively charge and this uh, Positively charged ions are being stored once they are being attracted in the soil colloid. However, soil colloid can also attract negatively charged, especially if it contains positive charge. And so, these anions that are being uh, attracted to the positive charge of the soil colloids will be temporarily stored in the soil colloids. So once the soil solution is depleted with these nutrients, then the tendency is that the, uh, the ions in the soil solution will going to exchange with the ions in the soil colloid. For example, in this figure, the calcium 2 plus that is being absorbed in the soil colloid will going to exchange with the magnesium 2 plus in the soil solution. Take note of the charges. So, um, calcium with 2 plus should also exchange with the ion with positive uh, uh, with 2 plus. Uh. Likewise, for the anions, for sulfate that going to exchange with nitrate, since nitrate has negative one charge then it needs to also to exchange with half mole of sulfate or to complete the exchange of ion sulfate requires two moles of nitrate to exchange with one mole of sulfate so in that process there is a supplementation of ion in the soil solution when ion exchange takes place. So there are factors determining the availability of nutrients in the soil. So we have the intensity factor. Intensity factor refers to the concentration of nutrient in the soil solution. So generally, only small amounts are present in soil solution. However, the greater the concentration of nutrient in soil solution, the greater the concentration of nutrient that is being absorbed. So the general order of nutrient present in soil solution is as follows. So magnesium 2 plus is greater than calcium 2 plus. Then calcium 2 plus is greater than um, sodium with one charge and then Sodium is greater than with potassium, and then potassium is greater than chlorine, and then chlorine is greater than sulfate. So in this aspect, in this uh, order, magnesium hamper the absorption of calcium, especially if magnesium has higher concentration than calcium. Likewise, 
Calcium will hamper the absorption of phosphorus, especially if the availability of calcium in the soil solution is higher than the than available amount of phosphorus in the soil solution because calcium will going to fix the phosphorus and they are going to form calcium phosphate which is uh, which is a precipitate and cannot be absorbed by the plants so we have also factors affecting concentration so we have ph for instance for example one among the factors is pH. For instance, ferrous uh, phosphate are abundant at lower pH value. The ferrous hydroxide that are present in the soil will react with hydrogen ion when the soil is acidic. And this reaction, iron 3 plus is being released and then there is formation of water. So from that, acidity will going to increase the concentration of iron 3 plus. So this iron 3 plus will going to react with phosphate and then with the presence of water to form ferrosulfate, which is called as the stringite which is a mineral, and then there is also release of hydrogen ion. The release of this hydrogen ion will going to increase soil acidity. That's why ferrosulfate are abundant at lower pH because iron uh, phosphate is being uh, formed under acidic condition. Another factor is the oxidation reduction. The state of the soil aeration affects the oxidation reduction potential which in turn affects the solubility of nutrients such as iron in manganese. For example, respiration of organic matter creates anaerobic microcytes in soil where Iron 2 plus concentrations increase above those of the iron 3 hydrolysis species, example the iron uh, hydroxide. Fluctuating redox condition in these microcytes are conducive to the formation of a mixed valency ferrosic hydroxide. And this metastable precipitate maintains an elevated level of soluble inorganic iron for prolonged periods and increased iron availability to the